4th be with you. I'm Jackson Taku. And I'm Matthew Jonah. Today is May the 4th and we're here with your distance learning news. Attention all AP students, make sure to check your emails to obtain your AP IDs needed to log into your AP test starting next week. Now let's see what Richard has for us on May the 4th. Good morning Wolfpack, I'm Richard Chow and today's May the 4th, so today I'll be talking to you about Star Wars Day. The date, May the 4th, also known as Star Wars Day, was first chosen for the pun on the catchphrase May the Force be with you, as May the 4th be with you. Even though the holiday was not created or declared by Lucasfilm, many Star Wars fans across the world have chosen to celebrate the holiday. The reference was first used on May 4th, 1979, the day Margaret Thatcher took office as Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. An online news article from the Danish public broadcaster says her political party, the Conservatives, placed a congratulation advertisement in the London Evening News, saying, quote, May the 4th be with you, Maggie. Congratulations. It has since been celebrated annually by Lucasfilm, Disney, and Star Wars fans across the whole country. In 2011, the first organized celebration of Star Wars Day took place in Toronto, Canada, at the Toronto Underground Cinema. Produced by Sean Ward and Alice Quinn, festivities included an original trilogy trivia game show, a costume contest with celebrity judges, and the web's best tribute films and parodies on the big screen. Although the first celebration of Star Wars Day consisted of a game show and a costume contest, there are plenty of ways we can celebrate at home, such as watching the original Star Wars trilogy, watching The Mandalorian, or even going back in time and playing the LEGO Star Wars franchise. That's all I have for you guys today, Wolfpack. May the 4th be with you. With COVID-19 affecting all mass gatherings, I wonder how Cinco de Mayo has been affected. Let's see what Lead has to say about that. These are trying times and our hearts go out to anyone who has suffered both physically or mentally due to COVID-19. For Lead Latino Club, the days leading up to Cinco de Mayo are filled with celebration and at the end of the week, we usually have a parent luncheon where the students and the families gather together to celebrate with us. But since that's not the case now, we would like to bring our celebration to you at home. If you're asking what is Cinco de Mayo, here's a little briefing. Cinco de Mayo celebrates the day in which the Mexican army victoriously beat the French in the Battle of Puebla in the Mexican and Franco War. Uh, some people have the common misconception that this day is actually Mexico's Independence Day, but that's actually not the case. Honestly, in Mexico, this day has little to no importance, but in the U.S., it has become a commemoration of Hispanic heritage and culture, which is really good. How are we going to bring the celebration to you, you ask? Well. I know a whole lot of you are spending hours throughout the day scrolling through TikTok and I don't blame you, it's very addicting. Since you're already taking the time to do this, we thought what better way than to incorporate some Hispanic heritage and culture into that time, you know? We would like for you to participate in making a Cinco de Mayo inspired TikTok. You could do this by making a piñata, dancing, or singing some Spanish song just basically doing anything that's related to Hispanic culture. How will we see it, you ask? Well, we would like for you to submit it to our Instagram, which is at leadcohs, for a chance to be featured on our feed or our Instagram story. This is all for fun and to take our minds off everything that is going on right now, at least for a little bit. I hope all of you are doing well and I wish you the best. Now let's check out our Artist of the Month. Hi, my name is Ty Burke and I'm this month's Art Student of the Month. I've been making art for pretty much all my life. Uh, my uncle's a tattoo artist and uh, he's the person who kind of got first got me into art when I was really little. Uh, and I really enjoy his style and the work that he makes and so ever since then, ever since I was little, I've uh, always gotten little sketchbooks and art supplies and pencils and other things for Christmas and my birthdays and things like that. And so I've always kind of used them to make art. I've never really taken art too seriously or taken myself too seriously as an artist. Uh, I just kind of like to have fun with it and so, uh, yeah. My favorite piece would probably have to be uh, the traditional tattoo style um, skull with the jeweler draped over it. I'm not really sure why, I just I kind of like that piece. Uh, it was really fun to make. It took me a long time to make, but I enjoyed it and uh, I just think it looks cool. So I, I love that piece a lot. 
When I make art, I really enjoy the slow-paced, peaceful kind of process of it all. I just I always really enjoyed the process, and even more so than the actual result or what I come out with. Uh, it's the process is just really relaxing for me, and I don't, like I said, really take my art too seriously. In fact, I don't even usually keep my art. It's, it really is just about the process of making it. A lot of times, uh, my music and my art are inspired by each other, and so like when I hear a, a composer that I really like have a, have a piece that I love, or see a piece by an artist that I really enjoy, it inspires in turn my music, or the music that I hear would inspire uh, my art, uh, and it just feels really good to just make something, whether that be music or art or whatever else. Well, that's all we have for you today, Wolfpack. I'm Jackson Taku. And I'm Matthew Jerome. Remember, the strength of the pack is the wolf. And the strength of the wolf is the pack. Remember to stay safe. And happy National Star Wars Day.